So do I have 30 accounts? Yes. Do you need 30 accounts? No. But first let me explain why I have 30 accounts and then you'll understand why my system works so well. It's been a lifesaver to our family and our budget and it's worked for us for about nine years now. Think of them as digital cash envelopes. A cash envelope is a physical envelope that is labeled and set aside for one specific expense or savings. It could be a utility bill, such as electricity, water, or it could be an envelope that stores money for a future trip. Typically, with cash envelopes, you would take whatever money you make from your paycheck and you would divvy it up into specific categories and amounts, leaving you essentially with nothing in your main checking account when it's all said and done. Before you freak out, the rationale is this. When you divvy up your money and set it aside for those specific accounts, you are using that money for only that specific reason. This helped with overspending because you are only allowed to take whatever's available in that cash envelope. At the same time, you're also not allowing yourself to dip into any other categories, which makes sure that you have enough money for that expense. There are definite pros and cons to using cash envelopes. And if you feel that withdrawing your money in cash every payday and divvying it out into different envelopes is overwhelming or confusing, that is totally fine. The method I'm gonna show you today makes it much easier, but it's the same idea. So back to the 30 accounts. Now 30 is a rough estimate as to how many bank accounts I have. And when I use the term category, what I'm referring to is either an expense or a savings of some sort. Essentially, it's just the reason money is being taken from your paycheck. So let's take a look at all the categories that I have in my bank account. So I'm gonna show you the different categories that I have in my bank, just so you can get a feel of how I have my account set up. So I have a savings account and then I have the main checking account and that's where my paycheck, my paycheck gets direct deposited every time. I also have auto maintenance, which is typically used for, you know, maintenance for our cars. So oil changes, um, if we need to get new windshield wipers, it would come out of that account. Gas is self-explanatory. That's gasoline. Dog fund, because we have dogs, I wanted a separate account where money was always in there. Um, so I wasn't having to find money for dog food or a vet bill. That account is set aside specifically for them. Our car payment comes out of this one. Fun money, as I explained earlier, it's so important to have a fun money account just because if you don't have it, you're going to probably end up spending money from one of your other accounts. So we have a fun money account set aside for, you know, when we watch movies or if we want to go somewhere. T-Mobile is for our cell phone bill. Um, we have a shared plan with our family. So that's what that one is for. Uh, this one is our electricity and gas bill. Xfinity is cable and internet. Miscellaneous, I wanted to set up a miscellaneous account. And this is for those times that you just, something that doesn't really fit into a category. So for example, if it's somebody's birthday and you need to get them a gift or a card and you're like, oh crap, where do I pull this from? That's what the miscellaneous account is for. Or if we have a neighbor that comes over and is like, hey, do you want to you know, buy this for a fundraiser we're doing? Yes, sure. So we have a little bit of money in that account for those miscellaneous situations. My husband has his own spending account. I have my own spending account. We have trash and water together. Our house insurance and car insurance comes out of this account. Student loans is self-explanatory. Uh, the house payment, home maintenance, similar to auto maintenance. It's, you know, if we need to uh, fix something up in the house or get a new appliance, it would come out of that fund. Membership and subscriptions. So if we have subscriptions to like Spotify or any online subscriptions, they would be taken out of this bank account. Child support for my son. Holiday Club is something that my specific credit union does. And it is a specific set amount of money that you deposit into this account. It's done automatically, but you can't even access it. So this is for Christmas. So um 
all the money that gets deposited in there, I will be able to have access to it in September. So they kind of hold it for you and safeguard it for you until then so that you can have money by the time the holidays come around to buy gifts if that's something that you do. Groceries is self-explanatory. Overdraft is another account I opened up because every once in a while, like sometimes we'll get an unexpected charge that comes out of one of the accounts. Maybe we used a different card on accident, or maybe when we purchased something online, we didn't pay attention to which debit card it should have come out of. And we are hit with an overdraft fee. The overdraft account is just a little bit of money in there for when we have to pay an overdraft fee. Um, and so that way we're not dipping into our other accounts. Stockpile is for when we go grocery shopping, but it's non-food items. So your laundry detergent, your toothpaste, your toilet paper, paper towels, things like that are coming out of the stockpile account. Ange 2.0 is another bank account I set up. And usually when I do user testing, which I explained in one of my videos, the money I get from that is deposited into my PayPal account. And then I transfer it from my PayPal account into my Ange 2.0 account. Max savings I set up a while ago. I don't really use it that much. I'm just going to have to close out that account. But that was for like um, Halloween and Christmas decorations. So like... I tend to go a little bit overboard with Halloween, admittedly. And so instead of trying to, you know, use money from other funds, I have this fund set aside for those holidays. Cottage is something my family and I try to rent every summer so that we can spend time together at a cottage on the lake. I know how much we spend to rent the cottage and then how much we spend on groceries and gas to get there. And so then I just divide it by 26 paychecks for the year. And then that amount gets deposited every check. Tires is for the cars. Anytime we need a new tire, we'll have that set aside. I, I know that could have fallen into auto maintenance, but this is just something that I wanted to do was specific for tires. Max savings. Again, I don't really know what that one is for. I think I'd set that one up before and I just I'm not really using it, so I need to get rid of it. Contacts is for my husband and myself since we need to get our eye exams or we get new contacts every year. Um, we have a fund set up for that. Uh, I have a separate fund set up for my husband's gifts. So like when it's his birthday or, you know, things for him like our anniversary or whatever, this is money that I have just a little bit of money every paycheck that goes into that. So when it's time to give him that, I have a specific account. This account I don't really use anymore. Um, Amazon Flex is another video I'll be doing. It's another way to earn some income, but this is designed specifically to hold the payouts from that job. And this again is um, another a business on the side. Um, money for that comes in this account and then our car account, our car payment. So that is the quick explanation of all of these accounts and why I have so many. Again, it's totally up to you how you want to set these up. But I know by doing this, I know exactly how much money is going where and how much is being taken out. Essentially, this system is based on automatic transfers that takes place on your payday. Because of this, this system works best if you have direct deposit already set up. In essence, you get paid on payday, it's direct deposited into your main checking account, and on that same day, that money gets filtered into all of the other accounts automatically. The great thing about this is that it is allocated to all your specified accounts before you can even spend it. Now, before we get into it, if you're excited to see how we can change your finances up with this method, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button for me. This will make sure that my video can be seen to others who might be trying to better their financial situation. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, how do I even start with this whole system? Let's begin. Step one is figuring out what each of your categories are going to be. I personally found it much more easy to just make one account for each category that I was going to be putting money into. You may find it easier, however, to chunk some expenses and some savings together into one account. So for example, you might decide it's easier for you to put electricity, 
gas, and things like that into one account. The reason why I set up individual accounts for each category is because it was easier for me to see exactly how much was being pulled out every payday. Additionally, it allowed me to not have to do all that math and try to figure out, okay, this amount went to this bill and this amount went specifically to that bill. I could just see the numbers and know right away what was going on. However, I still highly recommend that you find the system that works best for you. Step number two is calculate how much money from your paycheck is going to be going in each of those accounts. Now, admittedly, this is probably going to be the most time consuming part of this whole process. However, this isn't something that you're gonna have to do every single paycheck. You pretty much do it once and you don't have to mess with it ever again. The only situation that might come up where you want to go back in and change the amounts is if you decide you wanna add more accounts or change the amount that's going into each account. But even that doesn't take that long to do. In order to figure out how much exactly needs to get allocated for each category, I suggest opening up your online banking and looking at how much you've been spending in that specific category for the past few months. So for example, if we're looking at groceries, what I would do is I would open up my bank account online and I would look back for the past three or four months and average out how much I was spending each month on groceries. I know it's gonna vary a little bit with some of these variable expenses, but you'll get a pretty good idea once you go through and see, okay, I'm spending typically about this much a month on this expense. After you have found out what amount that's going to be, you're gonna wanna divide it by the number of paychecks you have in one month. So if you get paid on a weekly basis, you're gonna take that average number for that expense and you're gonna divide it by four. If you get paid bi-weekly, you're gonna take that total for groceries in our example and you're gonna divide it by two. Fixed payments such as your car payment and rent is gonna be a little bit easier because you have a steady amount each month. It's not going to change. So you're just gonna take that amount and divide it by the number of paychecks you have a month. Step three is actually creating your multiple accounts in your bank account. Now, this is going to vary based on who you bank with. When I initially started this, I was with a well-known bank. And what I found out pretty quickly was the more accounts that I made, the more they wanted to charge me because I was not putting my whole direct deposit into those accounts. So they wanted to take out a certain amount of money every month for each account, and that just did not sit well with me. Eventually, I moved to a credit union, which allowed me to have as many accounts as I wanted, which really works for my situation. Also, if you have already set up your initial main checking account at a local bank or credit union, Creating multiple accounts might just be something that you can do online and you don't have to go into the bank for. I know with my credit union, every time I wanna open up a new account, I just go online to my bank website and I can create a new account from there very quickly and very easily. It takes literally less than two minutes to do. So you might wanna check to see if your bank allows you to do that online as well. Step number four is setting up your payday transfers. Again, this is going to vary based on your bank or credit union. You're also going to have to know the next payday that is coming up in order for you to set this up because that's when it's going to hit. So I'm gonna show you a quick demonstration on my end how I set up the recurring transfers each month going off of my next payday. So I'm on my homepage of my bank account right now and usually somewhere at the top, you'll find somewhere that talks about transfers. So I'm gonna to go to my transfers and I'm going to click transfers between my accounts. Again, this is gonna depend on what your online banking looks like, but it should be fairly similar. So what I will do is I will set up a recurring transfer from my main checking account into whatever other account I created. So I'm gonna say checking, because when payday hits, that's the account that all my direct deposit goes to, is my main checking account. So I'm always gonna start it from that account and then have it go to the destination account. 
And then I'm going to type in the amount that I want there. So for this example, I'm just going to put $40. So I want $40 each paycheck. Since I get paid twice a month, that will be $80 a month. That will be constantly being put into that account for whatever reason. I'm going to say recurring because this is something that's going to be happening every payday. So I want this to start on the next payday. And this is where I was talking about before where you would need to know when that next payday is coming so that you can enter it in this section. So my next payday is March 17th and I want this recurring bi-weekly. So if you notice on mine, it says you can do this daily, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly. It gives you different choices. You might be able to do the same with yours. I just know that for every other week, I'm going to choose bi-weekly. And I'm going to put no end date because I don't know how long I want this going on for. Um, and I can put a comment if I want to, but otherwise, you know, I can just leave it the way it is. Hit continue. And then, then it's going to say, okay, starting on the 17th, this amount is going to be taken out of your main checking account and being deposited into this destination account. And it will occur every two weeks on your payday. So I'm going to hit complete. And then that is how I go about setting up a new transfer. Along with this, you can also find your transfer activity online. That allows you to go back and see what your set amounts are. And if you ever need to go in and change them, it only takes a few clicks to do that. Step five is setting up auto pay. So this is where you want to go into the website of your different expenses and set up auto pay for those categories so that the bill is automatically taken out from that specific account. Now that you have the correct amount already figured out ahead of time, you don't have to wonder if you'll have enough money to cover the bill because you've already done that work. Step number six is check and maintain these accounts regularly. Now, regardless whether you use this method or not, no matter what you do with your finances, I always, always recommend that you are checking your finances on a weekly basis. This way, you can notice any important activity that's happening in your accounts and make any adjustments accordingly. For example, if you notice that you have spent a little bit more on groceries this week, then you'll know you'll have to adjust your spending for the upcoming week. If if you're not getting paid on a weekly basis. Additionally, you might notice that if you have some leftover money in your accounts that you haven't necessarily spent, you might want to open up a new account, maybe set that aside for savings, maybe adjust those numbers so you can allocate that extra money to where it's best suited. I am confident that once you start using this system, your life is going to get so much easier. Once it kicks into gear, you're gonna feel this huge weight off your shoulders because you don't have to worry every payday, every month, do I have enough money in my accounts to pay my bills? Am I gonna get hit with an overdraft fee again? Because you've already done the legwork up front, it will take care of itself here on out. And if you're still finding out that you're not having enough money to meet all your expenses, then I have some ideas in my upcoming video that will put some extra money in your pocket. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Now, go put this information into action. And remember, it's never too late to start. See you in the next video.